So how many people have been to the uh, DEF CON Comedy Jam before? Any repeat customers? All right. How many of you are sober? The rest of you did not learn anything. If you're sober and you're in this panel, you're doing it wrong. Fail number one for the day. So um, th th this is an interesting year. We've had uh, a couple of unusual failures. First of all, normally David Mortman is the person who is our MC for the event. Uh, he coordinated this. He was the speaker proctor for all of Black Hat. And um, apparently he's still home in Ohio because... Uh, or I think he's in Boulder right now, because his boss would not let him come. So this is now rebranded the um, David Mortman Memorial Fail Panel. So am I to understand that the fail in that was that he lives in Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that poor boy is going to be crying that he missed this one, or something. Um, so we don't have David, which means we don't have any preparatory slides. We don't have any introductory slides. None of us have talked to each other about what we're going to do here today yet. Um, we're going to figure it out as we go. Uh, I know at least my presentation, including a live demo, was coded yesterday in the speaker's room. Uh, I can't speak for anybody. You just did yours, right, like this week? Yeah, on the airplane. On the airplane. Dave? I, I did mine about an hour and a half ago. Jamie? Airplane. Yeah, so um, we have no idea if anything we're going to do is going to work, and uh, yeah, so that's it, but we're going to drink heavily, and I really suggest you do the same. So just have your friend reserve your seat. It'll be cool. Nobody else will take it. Uh, so coming up here, we have our chef on the left, Christopher Hoff, with his assistant. Are you going by Jack Daniels today? Whatever. Okay. With his assistant, Jack Daniels. They will be making or Osama? fresh gourmet waffles, and you guys will be doing things to obtain said waffles. <laughs> yeah, and we'll be doing, uh, taking donations for the EFF in exchange for waffles as well, and the waffle irons, which we will autograph after the panel. Um, next to them is David Maynard. Wait, no, not me. I, I'm just telling them your name. Oh, no, not me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> James Arlen, Larry Pesci, myself, Rich Mogul. I don't know why Mark McKay is standing there. He said something about being our beer bitch, and he wants to speak. <laughs> Be, be closer to our beer. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of uh, something later, which is a preview for what Martin and I are doing later today. So, <laughs> uh, and if you guys in the audience want beer and we don't know you, an ID. That's all right. Fuck you. Um, uh, and uh, if it gets to the point where you, uh, we don't know you and we're about to hand you a beer, we, we probably should look in an ID so we don't go to jail. Because I don't like it. I'm, I have a nice ass. I'm a little pretty. And... I'm not the biggest guy there, and they like the little white boys with red hair and blue eyes and everything else. It's just not again. So, with that, Mr. Big Bad Larry Pesci from the Paul.com security broad. And I don't know actually how he makes money. You don't want to know how I make money. <laughs> Rich, you want to grab your laptop? No. <laughs> Fail number two. Don't fall. Careful. Careful. Oh, Hold on a second. Can I, just, can I just ask for a request oh, yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. What am I doing? I, I am told that there's a, an interview with Greg Evans that's going to be played. Could, could we go ahead and get that out of the way? I, I want to hear that. There, there may be an interview with Gregory Evans. Is it Gregory Evans here? He's been tweeting that he's here, somebody told me. Is he in the room? We have an honest-to-goodness for real interview, parts of which will be played a little bit later. Let me write this down for you. If Gregory Evans is here, I'll give you $100 if somebody can get a picture of him. <laughs> it's Spot Gregory Evans. No, no, this is, this, is, uh, this is us talking about fail. This panel isn't about us failing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You got me there. <laughs> All right, so let's get this started. So my role every year that I've come to the fail panel, I've talked about failures for someone else's stuff. This year, um, I didn't have a lot of fail, and it literally fell into my lap at the last minute. It fell into my lap about last week. I knew what I wanted to talk about. It was a matter of finding time to write the slides. And it wasn't fail about somebody else's stuff. It was fail about me. So we're going to have some, hopefully, humor at my expense today. Woohoo! Uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? 
So welcome to uh, my presentation for the DEF CON Comedy Jam 4, A New Hope for the Fail Whale. Okay. Entitled, Is It Hot in Here or Is It Just Me? Okay. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a senior security consultant with NWN Corporation's STAR team, the co-host of Paul.com Security Weekly, and an author, author with Singers Publishing. Um, I do all sorts of fun stuff, um, wireless, Zigbee, hardware hacking. I'm a firm believer in uh, if the fact that if you bought it, you own it, you take it apart. Make it do something else. Yeah, let's make it better. So uh, my co-host on the podcast, uh, Paul Hates Me, he often um, buys a device. And when I show up at his house Thursday to record the podcast, he's like, dude, check this out, and hands me some sort of blinky light thing. And the Leatherman immediately comes out, he turns around, and he turns back around, and it's in pieces on the desk. And it's usually met with, dude, I haven't even gotten that out of the box yet, or you just voided the warranty, and I've never turned it on. Okay. <laughs> so, I had two great tastes that taste great together, and not marijuana and kids peeing off of carts. <laughs> I shouldn't show this to my three-year-old because you know what will happen. Okay, so the two great tastes that taste great together, I love wireless and I love embedded stuff. So I find these Wi-Fi thermostats from Filtreat. They're touchscreen, they're Wi-Fi, or Zigbee. They also make the plug-in USNAP modules for Zigbee. Um, they're web programmable. You can get an interface through the Filtreat website and reprogram your thermostat while you're on vacation through the internet. This will never go wrong, will it? <laughs> never. And yeah, there's an app for that. You can get an app for your iPhone, so you can change the thermostat while you're not at home over 3G, Edge, whichever. That won't go wrong, will it? No, no. So, fail number one. Start of project price, when I picked up the first one, $110. Today's price? 74.91 from homedepot.com. Yeah, so I spent 110 bucks for something oh, 08 months ago and now it's a lot cheaper. Okay. So great. I've got this new now device with the USNAP module. I get it hooked up and yes, those are fire engines in front of my house. <laughs> that was not in fact the fail. <laughs> this is the fail. So, truth be told, it was all planned. We actually demoed the house to build a new one. And uh, we actually donated the house to the fire department to come do training exercises in. So, all right. Worked for effect, right? <laughs> I, I, I really can hook up wires from time to time without burning the house down. Okay. So, all right, I got this deal. Now I've got to get the hell out of my house, salvage a whole bunch of parts, move, and, well, yeah reset the stuff all back up again, and well, now we have a new house and got to do it all over again. So fail number two, um, burn the candle at both ends, and well, why don't you just burn it in the middle too? I just had way too much on my plate. Work a day job, move in with your mom at 36 year old, 36 year old with your wife, three year old daughter, and eight cats, and leave in two rooms for four months. So, so yeah. you live with your mom. What's that? So you live with your mom? Not anymore, but I did. What? No, <laughs> it wasn't in the basement. How about, how about yes? We have eight cats. She has two. <laughs> so would it be accurate to say you took the pussy to your mom's house? <laughs> how about that one? And I couldn't stop stroking it. Was she watching? Sometimes she helped. <laughs> Did she have shots? Did she have shots? I don't know. Every Friday night? <laughs> nice. Okay, so I've got the device. We set it back up on a piece of plywood at my mom's house um, in the basement with the cats. And rub my pussy or something. Um, so, all right, let's go do some device analysis. Let's gather some public info, get some documentation, set up your iPhone app so I can control it, and uh, 
turn the thing on and says, hey, do you want to update? Yeah, of course I do. I want to take the latest software they've got and want to make sure I'm evaluating, you know, the, the latest and the greatest, right? I am yeah. so screwed. <laughs> so fail number three. I should learn. Nobody updates this stuff, right? We have a hard time getting folks to update their computers, let alone their embedded devices, right? So the updates from Filtreat actually remove some of the features that I wanted to use that were in the documentation. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the absolute failure of uh, uh, Star Wars toys that didn't work out so well. It's uh, Uncle Lars and Aunt Brew. <laughs> the charred edition. It's a pile of burnt arms and legs. All <laughs> oh, right. So the first hack of this device was really easy. Yay, a well-documented API. Thanks. And of course, they give all of the programming examples in C, and I hate C. So fail number four is give a good hacker an Is that because you live with your mom? Yeah, yeah, it does. So give a good hacker something that doesn't involve programming. They tell you how to use the API with curl. Oh, my God. Why? I like how this is going. <laughs> okay, so what can I find out with the API? Well, thanks for documenting all the depreciated features that might have some interesting stuff that, well, I don't have on a thing that I can test. Okay. So how about that? We can get the wireless network key off the device via API with curl or with a web browser without authentication. Nice. So let's see what we get. Fire up terminal, whip out curl, and point it at my thermostat that was newly upgraded, and guess what doesn't work? Yeah, guess what features they depreciated in the version I upgraded to? Okay, so uh, this is going to get really uncomfortable. What? Oh, hell no! Are you serious? Wait, wait, I didn't see it. <laughs> Why are you so interested in Ready? it? Ready? Ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Darren, where are you? <laughs> oh. Come on up, show everybody your boner. <laughs> Come get a beer. Free dude, beer. Come dude, on. Dude, if I you show your boner on the screen, you get to get a beer. <laughs> Not you, Mike. You don't drink beer. <laughs> so wait, <laughs> by by doing this, are you admitting that you did in oh, fact have geez. a boner and that's not like a phone or something? It's the jeans. <laughs> where, where can I get me a pair of jeans like that? <laughs> oh, ain't you cute. <laughs> okay, so are we all awake, awake now? Okay. Sure? <laughs> I can do this all day. <laughs> okay. All right, so now what? I've got a device that I can't do shit with because all the stuff I wanted to get, those API, using the API to get some wireless keys off the devices, doesn't work. So what do I do? Go buy two new ones to put in the new house, right? All right, now I'm out $330. Okay. So fail number six. Guess what came from the store with the firmware already upgraded? <laughs> yep. And let's add fail number seven to that. Guess who spent four hours in a house in March without heat hooking these fucking things up? Damn! That's got to stink. That's, <laughs> that's because all pimps live on Coruscant and only little girls live on Alderaan. Nice, nice. By the way, there was also no electricity in the house. So I had to put the, uh, the power converter in the basement, hook them all up, and, well, run 400 feet of extension cords to our barn that was on a separate meter. Yeah, fail. Okay, fail number eight. You're 3,800 miles away when your wife moves in and says, how the fuck do I use this thing? <laughs> I'm not really sure who the fail is for that, because, well, I'm safely 3,800 miles away. <laughs> if men stop bullshitting women, it'd be the end of all of us. <laughs> it's so true. So fail number nine. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to add the picture. 
So I have a picture of my wife standing in the hallway next to the thermostat doing... <laughs> to me. So, what's that? Fail 8A, sure, yes, fail 8A, forgetting to add the picture. So fail number nine, having to wait for three days so I can take the picture of my wife giving me the finger. You know, the excuses I got, can we do it tomorrow? Can I have a shower first? Can I do my hair? I'm busy. Let's go have sex instead. That one works. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. So I've got these devices that I can't do shit with, right? So let's go see if I can find one. Yeah, maybe not so much. Shodan certainly can. Sorry. Yeehaw! Cowboy up, motherfuckers! <laughs> so everybody, this is Isabella. This is Isabella's first DEF CON. She didn't actually know I was going to do this. I just thought you should all say hi. Isabella, this is everybody. Everybody, this is Isabella. Hi, Isabella! Is this who I think it is? Thank you. Yes, yes it is. Oh, no! That did not just happen. All right, we're, we're sorry, sorry. <laughs> They're going to get ugly. Wait, wait, going to get ugly? Oh, you're just as cute as a box of kittens, aren't you? Uh. <laughs> All right, so Shodan can certainly find these devices for me because I've got one. I can figure out what the headers are for the HTTP session. So now I can search for this stuff. Great. Yay, 10 results. It's not very many. Um, so how many of them work? Turns out of the 10, Bob can connect to two. One of them not very reliably, but one of them like a freaking boss all day long, right? Tor, who heard of it? You know, just go connect there, right? Okay, so guess who doesn't update? The same dude that connects the uh, Wi-Fi thermostat directly to the internet. <laughs> yeah, winning. Okay, so now we can get his wireless network key, right? Okay, I just wanted to put tentacle porn in here, that's all. It, it was seriously just an excuse to put tentacle porn in. <laughs> Last year, you guys got pterodactyl porn. This year, tentacle porn. Okay. So now we can uh, get the wireless network key um, via the API or via uh, web browser. So how do we make sure it's a key that works? Okay. Well, let's just make that thermostat connect to the same network it's already connected to. Right? Okay. Search Wiggle, see if we can find out where it is, because the network is named Mark Lark. It's pretty unique, okay? It doesn't show up in Wiggle, unfortunately. Okay, the key looks like it's in hex. Who's brave and hungry? Sorry. Who's brave and hungry? Waffles! Waffles are a lie. Okay. Yes. All right, so the key looks like hex. No problem, we can use that. So, great, scan connect. Paste the key, and well, hmm. Fail number 10. Setting up a wireless network device on these uh, deals requires you to read numbers off the front of the LCD panel to confirm. I have no freaking idea where this thing is, let alone see the numbers on the front panel. Guess what I just knocked off the internet? Okay. So let's see if I can find some more, right? So let's go fire up a couple of uh, Amazon web uh, instances and break out Nmap. And well, it turns out fail number 11 is scanning the entire internet looking for specific HTTP headers is really effing hard. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what? Three days ago. Um, uh, Michael Sutter spoke at uh, Black Hat about his new Bruise tool, Bruise Scanner, looking specifically for embedded devices for something like this. So, yay for someone coding a tool that I didn't have time to write. Yay 
Of course, not in time for this talk, so maybe that's fail 11A. Okay. Okay. All right. So great. Uh, I'm kind of dead in the water, so let's change some directions. Um, let's go analyze the firmware directly. Right? Okay. So you got to get a copy of the firmware so we can do some analysis to it. Uh, we can't get it from the Filtreat website, uh, but we can capture it off the wire, right? Let's go initiate a down, uh, an upgrade, and capture it with Wireshark, and then dump the binary out and start looking at it, right? So then once we have it, we can start looking for strings, we can mount the file system, so forth and so on. Um, we did, I did something very similar to an Insignia Blu-ray player that I got for Christmas, and find out that they violate the GPL. Yeah. And aren't responding to any of my requests. Okay, so fail zero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> go to Best Buy, yeah, go Best Buy. So fail number 12. Hey, dumbass, guess what doesn't need upgrades? Yeah, so you click on the button, and it doesn't do anything. So there's no firmware for me to capture. Yeah, okay. So how about I just re extract it from the device instead? Okay, let's pop it open, connect all of our stuff up, and see if we can pull it from the flash chips, right? Okay, start it open. Let's figure out what chips we've got. Um, problem is... Guess where all of my electronics tools are? You see that box way back there? Yeah, no, you can't see it because it's buried under all that crap. Uh-huh. And no, not this one. Oh, well, maybe this one. And started digging through storage and try to find the stuff. And this is last week. OK? OK. All right, so fine. Let's go for something else. There's another, right? Sister. Um, let's find, let's <laughs> see what we can find out for undocumented API features on the web server. They're all uh, IP address forward slash file name and or directory return something. Okay, so let's, Jack, go ahead. We are trying to make some money here for EFF, so if you feel like paying for waffles or beer, or beer, throw it up here, and if you don't put up enough money, we're going to make you eat these fucking waffles. <laughs> That is, without a doubt, the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've all got file name or directory structure for the web server. So let's out bust out a Wasp Durbuster and see if we can find something that's not documented. So fail number 13. Um, even throttled as much as possible, Durbuster topples over the device in about 10 seconds. Uh, one thread, one request per second, that's the absolute lowest limit I could make Durbuster do. Takes the device out. Fail. Yeah, so inaccurate results are good as no results. Okay. So how many fails can I have for one simple project? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Those were the droids I was looking for. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Next time, find the tech writer and buy him a beer. This is not a bad idea. Anybody work for Filtreat here? Fuck. Quick announcement. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm almost done. So, um, so yeah, sometimes this stuff turns into a load of crap. It isn't much fun getting frustrated and uh, having to take steps back and spending lots of money and find out you can't do shit. Um, and, yeah, sometimes life just gets in the way of doing fun things. Um, but I got a new house out of the deal, so cool. Yeah, and a nice big mortgage payment to go along with it. Okay. And you got to have sex in your mom's bed. <laughs> wow. To make matters worse, not only was it mom's bed, mom's bed used to belong to grandma. Oh. <laughs> At least mom wasn't in it, but grandma was. It's probably best <laughs> if we don't just do things willy-nilly. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I still want to pursue this one, see if I can come up with more fail, make this thing work. Um, I've got to get the firmware, so stay tuned. I just have to wait for them to come up with a new release so I can actually upgrade the damn thing and capture it. Um, I want to get a, copy, or get a hold of one of the Zigbee uh, USENAP modules and see if there's anything that we can do there. Um, one of the other things that's documented in the API and the documentation is called the Marvel Discovery Protocol, which is loosely based on uh, SSDP, and, uh, which is the basis for UPnP. Yeah, nothing could possibly go wrong with uh, UPnP, right? What are they doing on that table? No, no. 
So let's uh, figure that out. So, <laughs> fail number 14. I've got nothing but fail on this whole project, and it ended up falling in my lap, and I actually was very disturbed that I didn't think I was going to have anything to talk about. So, all right. I hope you at least enjoyed my fail and uh, have some waffles. And uh, Chris, Chris is over there uh, whacking his batter right now. You got good. You got good wrist action there, buddy. What do you do? What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> all right. So I am, in fact, all out of fail. This is how you can get a hold of me. Cool. No, no new pictures. Why is it that most We're, nudists are people you don't want to see naked? <laughs> what he said. Mar actually, Martin, we were, we're hoping for no nude pictures. We were just going to get you naked. Okay. I need to, you want to go? Do you have a display port? Uh, money to the EFF to get yeah, Martin naked. Yeah. This, this only has Thunderbolt. No, Thunderbolt will work. And our mini display board adapter. Oh, will it? Yeah. Excellent. Money to the EFF to get Rich Mogul naked. Get me what? Money to the EFF to get Rich Mogul naked. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep trying, Wendy. You were in here. Actually, I may be the only person in history to have dropped his pants at DEF CON and the RSA Security Conference on stage at both. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> six more, though, maybe. <laughs> Seriously, do you want to throw those at us? You do see those two boxes in the corner? There's 750 of these balls on stage. And if you throw them at us, those boxes will stay more closed than my high school girlfriend's legs. So we're going to save and them for... And your college girlfriend. We are going to save them for later age. because, quite honestly, we don't want beer in our laptops. Don't worry. You know what? I have a plastic cover. Let's break out the balls and do this. My laptop condom will be fine. Nice. Nice. All right. Who's up? Riches. So we're going to get to the next session in just a moment. First, I need to bring somebody up, Josh Abraham, otherwise known as Jabra. So we don't have enough time for me to go through my section before he has to leave to go somewhere else. But. The story we'll get to is he is my fucking hero. So I showed up at DEF CON with nothing, absolutely nothing for the panel this year for reasons I'll go into later. I said, hey, Josh, I have this cool idea for something. It's going to take me like a week or two or something else to program it. And he's like, no, dude, just, 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 just tell me what to do. And uh, yeah, that, you'll see it later. Would you like to speak any words on the fail panel? There's only 1,000 people here. How's it going, DEF CON? <laughs> Kind of sad I can't stay because this is pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I got to go do some wireless stuff. But yeah. Rich, Rich had some cool stuff. You guys will love the demo. I'm sure he turned it into a lot of win. Yeah, just hanging out. Thanks. Like, I just had to do this because uh, I would have absolutely nothing if it wasn't for Josh. I cannot do what he did as fast as he did. No way, shape, and form. So that was just awesome of him. And he's going to do a Sky Talk right now. This is the only time during the show you're allowed to leave without being penalized. So. <laughs> All right, so next, uh, who's going next? Jamie? Oh, I guess. Mr. James Arlen, now in terms of fail, Jamie has done, um, how many sessions is this up for you today? Plus running Hacker Pyramid, plus Def Black Hat, plus... Could, uh, yeah. could I take a second real yeah. quick? Could I, could, could I take a second real quick? I have a friend named Sean Hunt right here in a green shirt. And his doppelganger is literally standing right there. You, sir, in a green shirt, could you come over here? This isn't often that you get to see this. Sean, could you, could you come up here? Oh, shit. Yeah. Could, could you guys stand next to each other? <laughs> could, you, could you hug each other? Could somebody give a hand job to each other? Simon says, give a hand job to each other? No? All right. Well, I, I, just, I noticed this because I kept looking over there and I was I've like, there's to a guy twins. in line for waffles that looks just like Sean. I was like, well, 
You know what? That, this, this in itself is fail. Thank you. Wait, I want balls. <laughs> it's about time. Maynard says he wants balls. About time. You know, <clears throat> Mortman sent me an email and said, hey, you want to be on the fail panel? And I said, why? I said, Mortman, oh, oh who the hell are you? Oh, my God. Why? There you go. Uh, <clears throat> one of my all-time favorite pictures from, uh, from last year's DEF CON. Um, doesn't he have the cutest, sweetest little face? Uh, how many times did you buy this waffle iron, Chris? He's not talking to us. I, I think Chris bought this waffle iron about four you times. You know what? Of all the people I know in the world, you are definitely one of them. <laughs> So, give the EFF some fucking money already. <clears throat> Watch your beer. The balls are out. <laughs> yes, please don't throw balls at me. I don't have really good dexterity anymore. Yeah. <laughs> anymore. <clears throat> he doesn't like balls this flying in his face. This is not fooling about, by the way. Peripheral nervous disease. I'm losing my hands. Quit hitting people with those things, Martin. Shit. <laughs> I didn't have to talk. He's all the entertainment. School, I'm employed, I want to stay employed. I'm going to talk smack about shit, stuff, like a boss, yeah. Um, you've all seen this shit before. You know who I am. Don't throw a ball at me, man. There will be a quiz Wait, at the end. Game show host? Yeah. You can, you can see me man. on this oh, stage right, 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 right. Oh, tonight. Um, it's just sort of <laughs> the way it is. Well, that was some fail right Fuckers. there. Um, this is worth two CPEs. Two, because, because APT, SCADA, stuff. Cyber. You know, th this might be a good segue moment. How many um, CISSPs do we have in the room? Are, are you serious? So, You're associating with hackers. Are you, are you right. serious? Jamie, I'm going to screw your session up for a moment. Well, now I can spot a Fed. <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> I am the Fed, David. Oh, am you the Fed? No, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> they have the rock hard abs. So we all know. Nice. We all know that if you have a CISSP, they ask you, what is it? Do you consort? With ha do you associate with hackers? How many CISSPs in the room associate with hackers? All right, so give me one moment. I'm out, like three strikes. No, I'm not going to take a picture. I'm going to show a picture. So, you know, the thing is, no, I, I don't have my CISSP. Um, I, I just retarded or something. Um, or, yeah, I couldn't pass the test or whatever. Um, determined that it was completely unnecessary for anything in the face of the planet. Um, so let me pull up here. But I do have a picture here of a happy CISSP. Now the problem is, is I took this picture where? At DEF CON. What is DEF CON? It's a fucking hacker conference. Do you associate with hackers? Okay, so I am very much a law-abiding citizen of the United States. That's not true. There's that thing with the goat. I believe she consented. <laughs> she never said nay. <laughs> so uh, I, I found this poor CISSP running around, um, around DEF CON, and as a law-abiding citizen, Somebody who believes in ethics, who believes in the oaths of office that we take, or some of you took, or something. Me. I felt that it was my civic duty to remedy that situation. Me. I have here the official CISSP certificate of that individual. So I need someone to go ahead and confirm this, Martin. Don't read the name, but... It looks like mine. Anybody else want to want to come validate that this is an authentic CISSP certificate? Yeah, yeah. You're good at making copies. Ah, fuck you. 
This is a real deal. So, what do you think we should do with it? Burner! Burner. It's a witch! Burner! All right. So here's the thing. Waffle iron. I used to be a firefighter, so I know a little bit about certain regulations. So. Sispy waffle. Can we burn some of it? We don't have. Uh, get get one of the bowls. Can we get a bowl? Fucking bowls are busy. What? So um. We have officially rescinded a CISSP at DEF CON. It's a civic action. It's a protest. Yeah, that's full of win, isn't it? <laughs> now, what are some of the other restrictions? Don't, aren't you not supposed to consort with, like, help people who aren't CISSPs? Where's the water? Aren't you supposed to defend uh, the profession? Uh, you're not allowed to complain yeah. about a CISSP unless you are a CISSP. And I didn't read those oh, since first. before you had him. Are you serious? <laughs> This doesn't seem like a fill panel kind of thing right here. This seems kind of lame. This is fucking pathetic, but it's the closest we can get to burning a CISSP. This, this is high quality paper. No, seriously, look at this. It's like, yeah, I could heat my house. All right. Okay, back to you, Jamie. Is it still burning? It's, it's still, oh, there it goes. It's, it's from hell. It'll burn forever. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, in the 11 seconds that I have left... It smells like security. <laughs> Damn it, Rich pulled his iPhone. Shit. I, I, my brain is like... All the time, and you lucky bitches get to listen to it for a while. Guess what InfoSec does all the fucking time? We fail. There you go. So I like InfoSec to fail on my pants. Sucks to the point of, of incredible suck. And not being able to talk about crazy, simple shit... They just talk about it in a safe way. Well, talk about information handling. How many people are experts in information, handle information. handling? I like to handle my information, if you know what I mean. It's a corpus. <clears throat> Maynard is so sick. Information's toxic waste. Doesn't that make it all easy? You can just snuggle right up to that and say, I don't want toxic waste in my life. <laughs> Classification. I'm actually trying to teach you guys, and this is not friggin' the correct time. <clears throat> Keep it in your family. Don't tell kids. So basically, we should live in West Virginia. You know, you. This one's right. your line, twisted, dude. But all right. The orange jumpsuit. Don't make fun of West Virginia. I have some hot fucking cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Said, don't make fun of West Virginia. He has some hot fucking cousins. Works well the way he's dressed today. I'm just going to keep advancing slides while they yammer on about shit. Push the button, monkey. It's kind of painful, isn't it? It's kind of really... <laughs> what are you, a fucking mime? Speak the fuck up! These, 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 these slides are like a, a, a story that tells itself, really. What type of solution should we offer? Martin. Martin McKay? Yeah. We're going to offer Martin McKay as a solution? What's the problem? PCI. Oh. Sorry. Everybody, let's, let's bow our heads for a second for PCI. I am it's officially dead, and everybody acknowledges, including Martin, now that he's left Verizon. I am not PCI a PCI. PCI does not work. bullshit is what this is. <laughs> Just, just give it a shot. I'm sure you'll get through this eventually. Should have gone into baseball. You know what? It's great. You guys aren't paying attention. I'm just skipping ahead. <laughs> hey, I need to be able to check Facebook at work. Jamie, we stopped fucking with you. You can talk again. Oh, you stop fucking with me now? Okay. Do InfoSec right, please. Can we start this? How about we make it the uncertification? Fuck it, we're just gonna do it right for a change. Are those more balls? It comes with stickers. 
See me later. Everybody knows how to talk business? <laughs> Everybody loves using all the effects they've got in Keynote. Yeah. Is that the blink tag? Yes. It's, it's the Apple version, though. It softly blinks at you <laughs> while it caresses you. <clears throat> the 10 ways of the douchebag. Catastrophically true. Unrelentingly true. Verbing nouns? Verbing nouns? Yeah. Cyber douching? Is that what you mean? No. We're, we're, we're going to solution that. <laughs> we're going to action that. At this point, I feel like we've lost control of the house. You want to know how many meetings we had before this panel? Zero. That's why it's awesome. <laughs> it's just this simple. A game invented by men chasing sheep around fields. <laughs> the only addition that modern man has provided is they now use carts instead of walking. <clears throat> Spent time recently in a very large institution. No one needs that many fucking emails in one day about shit they don't care about. Requirements? What the fuck are requirements? Why should we use those things? We just build shit and hope it fits. The bike shed will be blue. <clears throat> How many people have ever said during their performance assessment period that they're evaluating their options. To like a woman? Or like no. <laughs> to maybe a guy? No, more like I'm the only person in InfoSec who hasn't changed jobs in the last month and a half. I'm a little bitter about no, that I, shit. I, I still work for Rata Security. You're, you're still in InfoSec? Yeah. Oh, I did okay. not claw my way <laughs> Barely, though. Top of the food would, would you like to, to re-vector the build shit. effort? No, I don't know what that means. How about the market forces? Is the market force a penis? No. <laughs> then uh, no. And, and the uh, disclaimer I didn't include the last time I, I was standing up here yammering at you, poor pathetic bastards, I'm not the reason why the Toronto Stock Exchange is reading a negative number for an hour and a half yesterday. <laughs> I've heard this shit in a meeting, and I'm getting really good at saying it. Paradigm shifting while opening the kimono and going triple net on solutioning the opportunity space for capitalization, really market trailing leads, looking for leverage advantage post Web 2.0. I don't, I don't know what that means. Drink. This gets you so much venture capital money, you've got no idea. Bingo. It worked on the goat. Stop with the shit, please. We need you to. Could we get like an uh, anti cyber douchery certification? Um, basically, it comes down to this. Those of you who've been around long enough to remember what cybering means. <laughs> you see, I, I met my wife on, on the internets back when that was still a Jerry Springer story. She's right there. 1996, IRC. I know what cybering means. Every time I see a multi-star general saying the word cyber, all I can think about... <laughs> Wait, that's um, your kid too, isn't it? it my, my, my stepdaughter's in the crowd too. And his she's stepdaughter not and his wife are right there. His... Wow. <clears throat> so when you see, you know, four-star generals talking about cybering each other. <laughs> Don't throw them at Jamie, please. We'll make it easy. Oh. <laughs> Activism and risk-taking. Um, this is like the, the temporarily very, very important that you bastards all listen to me. Um, <clears throat> we're talking about taking real risks. Anybody recognize this guy? You fucking should. His name is Byron. Um, 
he decided to do something that could be described most easily as being a little bit batshit. <laughs> a little while ago, about a year and a bit, uh, we had this thing called the G20 G8 Summit happening in Canada. Uh, they, they decided to hold the G20 Summit in the middle of Toronto. Right? Smack in the middle of downtown. There's no good way to build walls around this stuff. I mean, hell, they, they held it at the same place that Sector happens every year, you know. There's no security going on there. So they spent $1.2 billion trying to secure the downtown financial core of a major city. Hard to secure an igloo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the funniest part is, the guy who just yelled out, it's hard to secure an igloo, works in downtown fucking Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Max, come get a moose head. Uh, <clears throat> Byron started pointing things out on the internet. He said, you know what? This CCTV camera is pointed at a wall. I'm going to take a picture of it and post it on Twitter. Uh, this CCTV camera has its cables not run through the inside of the arm that it's hanging on, but rather looped on the outside, making them oh so, what's the word I'm looking for? Vulnerable? Yeah. Um, pointed out places where there were um, gaps in the fence. These guys are fucking crazy. <clears throat> the most important thing is, unfortunately, he got nailed. They threw him in jail for uh, <clears throat> 11 months without bail. Yeah. So anytime you think that just poking fun at the system or having some stuff in your house that's, you know, highly questionable, like a disassembled potato gun in the basement of your parents' cottage 500 miles away, you're starting to understand that um, the situation is not all it seems to be. I am so screwed. <laughs> yes. Uh, in, in fact, when, when Byron was arrested, I actually thought of you and, and thought, I'm glad you live in the land of the free and home of papers, please. <laughs> There's a publication ban on Byron's case. The trial is November 7th. The reason for the, public, for the publication ban is actually kind of important. It was asked for by the defense because in Canada, just as much as in the United States, prosecution by the media happens all the fucking time. Um, ask any person who worked as a high school teacher who was accused of fooling about with a high school student. They don't get to be a teacher anymore. Fuck it if the accusation was completely false. There's a front page story about how they were playing with a student, and several years later, there's a minor retraction printed on page 87. Pay attention to this stuff because it's real. Um, you can think that you're doing something that's just kind of comedic, and you can end up in jail because the world's gotten a little fucking funny these days. Um, you can help out. Guy's legal bills are over 100 grand to get through his bail hearing. Canadian? Yeah, <laughs> that means it's 105,000 US dollars. You got no idea how much I'm loving this moment of superiority for like just two seconds. Currency jokes are funny. Do they take credit? <laughs> this is just to get through bail. This is crazy shit. The government needs a scapegoat for why they spent $1.2 billion. The Toronto waterborne police forces have one of those sound cannon things for doing crowd control. What? You think I'm kidding? No. Yeah. Sound control cannon mounted on a boat in Toronto Harbor. Because, you know, we needed one of those. We have two others in Toronto that we bought as part of the G20. So you, you know, so you have three crowd control sound cannons in fucking Toronto. Three million people in Canada. Wow. Before you walk off, just remind people that there's a lot of there's a lot of money on the table, but we need a lot more. Oh yeah. Um, you saw the first slide about raising money for EFF so that Chris can hug the uh, waffle iron. He's going to buy three more times. <laughs> <clears throat> How come there's no one lining up for waffles? They're Guinness waffles. There is beer in the waffles. Of course, that means you're giving us money and we're giving you alcohol, which could probably land us in jail. We'll be coming up in a second. We have permits. Thank you. Jamie. Jamie. 
This is the shit we're talking about. I mean, this is Canada, right? Apart from being able to blame us for everything that, you know, woes you, Canada's the tolerant place, and we're throwing people in jail without bail hearings because we're kind of scared that they might understand how, you know, fences work. <laughs> the reason, ultimately, that, that they picked him off came down to a papers please kind of moment. I, I'm old enough that I remember hiding under my desk during the air raid drills. Um, many of you are not. The Cold War was kind of really real when I was a kid, and the biggest jokes in the world were, papers please you cannot pass, kind of shit. And you guys are living with that, day in and fucking day out, and you're all apparently okay with it. And I don't understand. Well, if you're not, why the hell? Jump on stage and take a beer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, if you're critical of the powers that be, you're gonna get noticed. Um, more than ever before, the surveillance society is here. You thought the Stasi had a lot of files? You gotta have a look at what your own government has these days. You are guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> On so many other topics, you know, fuck what's in the Constitution. Here's yet another example. You know, remember that whole innocent until proven guilty? You know what? Pre-trial custody has fewer rights and privileges than post-trial custody. You get daylight for less than an hour. You're not allowed access to the library, the gym, the common areas. It's kind of, um, what's the word, batshit insane? And remember that hackers are scary. You're only one step away from being a scapegoat and vilified in the media because you, know, you understand how the internets work and you know why you don't always need to turn it off and then back on again. And would, would this include the tubes? This is also, yes, with the tubes. All right. Uh, and it's, it's crazy simple things like uh, how many people, or sorry, how many people who are female hackers and or male hackers who have a female that lives in a house with them, which is about five of you. Um, <clears throat> Does my mom count? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, how, how many of you do you think have peroxide and acetone in your bathrooms? That's a nail polish remover and your first aid kit. Guess what? That's bomb-making materials. Yeah, that's Mr. Underwear Bomber. Yeah. Well, see, <laughs> why do you think we have the why you think you keep them? That's why they're going to throw you in fucking jail. <laughs> they're going to line us all up, and they're going to toss us out. I need to talk to all of you about this shit, because <clears throat> it's important for a change. <laughs> I'm good. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> You lost your beer. You came up on stage and you stole a beer that wasn't open and now you lost your beer. And now you're fighting. These kids today, I'm telling you. It's like being hacker dad. <clears throat> Do a better job of presentation. I've sat through DEF CON presentations where people are reading. Not even just reading their slides, they're reading off of sheets of paper because they don't actually have their topic that well in hand. Tell the story, for Christ's sake. Get a little bit of investment in you as speaker because you are a person true special snowflake too. <clears throat> and um, I think because I just got the get the fuck off the stage signal, um, I'm gonna go to getting the fuck off the stage directly with, hey, these are all the peeps I care about. Thanks, most of them in Daffodil at this point. And you're back in here at eight o'clock, right? Yeah! I'm done, thanks. So, so, Jamie, what do you feel about a clap? And, and people, this free Byron shit is real, so you, you definitely, even though we're down here in the States where apparently we're supposed to have freedom of speech as long as we don't fuck up. Fail. Oh, God. Missed. Have a side show.
So um, before we go on with our next session, oh, right, right. Th this person has a, a, actually a history. So is, is Gregory D. Evans here? Really? I, I hear he, he goes to all the hacker cons. Yeah. Gregory Evans. So um, we were offered the opportunity to do an interview, Martin and myself. Most of the interview is going to be played this afternoon when we do the, uh, we have the Network Security Podcast Live with all the other podcasters we're going to be doing here. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a sampling. Um, and I honestly don't need to. 28, 28, 28. Here we go. Chris, do you have actually the pictures? No. Okay, no, not going to happen. We were supposed to have a nice, pretty PowerPoint slide here, but somebody failed because he spent $450 so you could have fucking waffles. So you brought up a bunch of interesting issues, and, and one of the things that, that I can't, you know, we're, we're very interested in is what's your end game here? I mean, what's, what's the overall goal? You've talked about a lot of the issues related to the, the security industry and the people that come into the industry, as well as how security is perceived by, you know, just average folks over at Barnes & Noble. Um, you know, what's the end of goal here? Is it, uh, you, you know, what do you personally hope to do with your involvement with the industry? Um, is it just to build a successful business? Is it to go out there and actually help people become more secure? You know, for, for you, what would be the end game? Actually, there's a couple things. One, I want to change the game. Because right now, everybody out there has this, this idea in their head that Hollywood has put out there that all computer nerds, all computer hackers are some fat little kid with Coke bottle glasses with the tape in the middle who was in his mom's basement playing on the computer, never got the girl, never got picked for the basketball team, and that's not true. Computer hackers carry just as much power as anybody else in the world and can be just as dangerous as anybody else in the world. I recently did an article where I was um, speaking to someone. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Who doesn't know who Gregory Evans is? All right. It's a fair number of people. So this is somebody who wrote a book about how to become the world's number one hacker. Uh, he's involved in an, a number of lawsuits with various legitimate people within the security industry. He's had a head-to-head -head with attrition. Um, and, uh, well, well, Dave, what are some of the other things he's involved with that you're at least allowed to talk about without being subpoenaed? Uh, he, uh, he registered the, the domain name for a, uh, oh, that, that's just not good right there. But he registered, <laughs> I can't believe that he was on my screen, I feel dirty. He registered the domain for a lot of uh, employees of my company because apparently he thinks that attrition.org slash errata and errata security are the same thing. So he literally registered domain names and Dave's name and other people's names for his company because he was a little confused about who was what. So let's go back to the interview. ...about how dangerous hackers are compared to Al-Qaeda. With Al-Qaeda, you know who your enemy is. You got people in the field. You can see them, they can see you, you can shoot Wait, them. Wait, did he just say you can keep them in the field? When it comes to computer hacking, there's no face. It's like the boogeyman. It's like there's no face. And you have to find out. You know a crime's been committed, but how do you catch them? So my whole end game is, is to bring more light to light. Look, computer hacking is here. It's here to stay. And you guys, all you guys who went around and picked on those computer nerds in high school, now these guys have power. So now, not just hackers, but just computer people, period. So I want to turn around and change the whole game and bring more knowledge to everything that's happening out there. In addition to that, make it more of almost like a lifestyle. When some of my friends who are entertainers, such as um, Russell Simmons or even um, Puffy, P, P. Diddy or whatever you want to call them these days. Can, can you pause this when for I'm a second? Sitting back can, can you pause it for a second? Years ago and they were coming out with the clothing line. I'd like to point out that as a hacker, it's important that you hang out with Puffy. <laughs> I only do my best hacking when Jessica Alba is in the room. <laughs> Hanging out with celebrities. Oh, is that what you yeah, no, I, it's exactly what I call it. On the fail panel, it's called turning batter, but back home, it's called hacking. I only do my best work when there's celebrities in the room. 
Right. So I like, <laughs> I like to go around the room. I'll talk to Matt Damon and Ben Affleck because they're great riders, and I like to ask them what kind of payload should I be riding. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, they're often having sex with each other, so the payload talk, it, it gets a little weird. The best and person, the, I'm, I'm not even joking, but the best person to come help you with uh, payloads, Gary Busey. All you got crimes been tried, crimes been committed, but how do you catch them? So my whole end game is, is to bring more light to light. Look, oh, no, computer hacking is here, oh, it's here to stay. And you guys, all you guys who went around and picked on those computer nerds in high school, now these guys have power. So now, not just hackers, but just computer people, period. So I want to turn around and change the whole game and bring more knowledge to everything that's happening out there. In addition to that, make it more of almost like a lifestyle. When some of my friends who are entertainers, such as... um. Russell Simmons or even um, Puffy, P. P. Diddy or whatever you want to call them these days. When I'm sitting, sitting back and I'm talking to them years ago and they were coming out with their clothing line and they were sitting back telling me one time we were at a club and, well, we were at dinner before we went to the club, I should say, and we were sitting back talking at the table and he was saying how he make, how hip hop has become more of a lifestyle. The way people dress, the way people talk is more than people picking up a microphone and just rapping. You don't have to be a rapper to be part of hip hop. And whereas in security, when it comes to computer hacking, it has become a lifestyle of its own. So, and the hacker community is a group of people, and it's a close-knit community, too. It's spoken by a man who is not a DEF CON, but telling people he is. So, um, it's a group of people, but this is their life. This is their lifestyle. So, and it's not going away. So, when I'm doing an interview, like... 20 minutes ago, the Hollywood reporter, I'm on the phone with them, and he's asking me about Sega and certain things, or I'm doing Entertainment Tonight, or I'm doing CNN and Fox News Network all within an hour of each of each other, which is funny because they're both competing stations. It's because I'm trying to show the whole world that there's a lot of dangers out there that we don't think about. And there's nobody out there to protect you. So that's my end game. Great. Well, we... And that's the end of that. All right, so Mr. Maynard. Dave, you going to talk? We're done. No, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to imagine my, my Hollywood reporter. So when I do hacking, I like to wear a monocle. I got rollerblades on, some ski pants, and I don't wear a shirt because my nipples are fucking awesome. So I just like to sit there and think about what Hollywood reporters are going to say to me. We I just lost our something video. like this. Yeah, we just lost video. We lost power up front, so. AV people. Did you kick the switch? Oh, no, oh, no. It's, it's on. It's on. Yeah. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah. That means he kicked the switch. So I imagine that any conversation with a Hollywood reporter about hacking would end with utter disgust when they look and see that you he haven't moved in three days, nor taken a shower, and you don't have a Vendi bag. So I don't I don't quite know why Hollywood reporters would talk about hacking. Any any thoughts? Anybody? Any, anybody? Bueller? This is the part where he wastes time until he can show his slides. I'd like to waste time by talking about something that's very near and dear to my heart. Breast Let's cancer. Let's make off talk. He's funny. Breast cancer. If you have a chance, please donate. Stop breast cancer because I love boobs. Just save second base? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> You're back. So last year in fail, I'm going to start this off. I kind of ruined it. It's kind of funny. I really don't have anything else to say about it. Pretty much just fail. Fail all around. Fail, fail, fail. Move I just on, like, you if commie. you remember one thing from this panel, it would be this picture and the word fail. So I'd like you to sit, pontificate on this for a minute. I'm going to drink a beer, and I want you to all to say, on the count of three, 
fail. All right, ready? Now, this isn't hard. When I say three, you say fail. All right? One, two, three. He lives in the South. I, I, live, I live in the deep South. I got my boots on. I got a cowboy hat back in the room, and I got a steer I done fucked earlier. Once again, in English? Squeal like a what? Squeal like a Democrat. <laughs> they don't put their hearts into it. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone sideways. So last year, these fuckers tried to get me married off. How many people were here for the panel last year? Right? Does everybody remember me having to go to the bathroom in the middle of the panel? It's the only time I've ever done that uh, sure. in a presentation. That's mostly because Larry here had just said, and do you know what? I am now an ordained minister in Nevada. I can marry you. It's true. So His fiance was here. Yeah, and usually you don't leave the stage to go to the bathroom during your presentation. You just go That's right there. That's a good waffle. <laughs> So that wasn't cool, you? and I love the fact that I misspelled wasn't. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Look, there, were, there was a girl in front of me earlier with a beer, and she was, I, you know what. So, oh my God, I don't know what that is. It looks weird. Let's, let's move on, but remember the word thunderbolt. Let's move on. Now, uh, I invest in hookers and blow because this year at DEF CON, I don't have a pretty red-headed fiancé with me. And it's thanks to these assholes. So everybody, let's clap for the guys who stopped me from getting laid at DEF CON. Everybody. Let's. I wasn't on the panel last year, just for the record. I'm, I'm, he was not. So when I say these guys, I mostly mean the two right here on the end. And Rich, Rich could be your pretty little red-head. <laughs> Rich could be my pretty little redhead. Hey, Rich, Rich, do you, do you want to you wanna sit on my knee? <laughs> Not again. It's dangerous up here. That only works once. So now you're supposed to applause because I like hookers and blow, but you already did that. See, you're, you're smarter than me because I actually originally created this slide and was like, oh, I, I have to use spell check now. That because tag is illegal. I literally could closed. not spell applause. You need to oh, close my the God, tag. what is that? I, I don't know why these things keep showing up in my... My, my presentation, that looks like Ida Pro. Does, is there, is, are there any reverse engineering experts here? Is, is that Ida Pro? Is, is, that, is that what that is? is are, are we looking at an Apple Thunderbolt driver? Are we looking at an Apple Thunderbolt driver? Are we looking at something Apple? Yes, Rich? just go on. Rich, Rich, are we looking at something from Apple? Yes. Right, all right. <laughs> I literally was driving on Sunday and saw that and thought I would put it in the presentation. It's... <laughs> People from the South. Dave, yes. is, this, is this the new woman? No, actually, it's funny you mention that. That's the new woman. Nice. He's clearly not black. He's clearly not black, Chester. I don't think that. Yes. <laughs> As we can tell, I don't have the same tan she does. I do have tan thong lines, though. Thong lines. Dave, it's, it's still hard for me to tell. I can't because the picture is mostly the bottom. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> you came to DEF CON, you get the hot buttery nipples. All right. Who now wants to lick the butter off my nipples? It's, but it's not butter. It's one of the few times in my life when I've actually felt sexier than everyone else on stage. Well, all right, all right. Well, at this point, we're just... No, I'm just joking. Oh, my God, there's error messages about fonts and Apple. I, I don't know what this is going... What is going on here? Oh, did I get my beer back? Thank yeah. you. All right, well, aside from the fact that I have a Halo ODST tattoo on my chest, let's move on. Oh, my God, I have a program called Thundercock. Well, 
I'm a huge Ghost in the Shell fan. Can anybody actually see me? Is the white too much? Am I being washed out here? The white has always been too much, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That's Steve, the AV guy, frickin' rocks. All right, so basically, do you know that there's been some speculation recently about whether DMA attacks would work on Apple Thunderbolt? Yeah, well, they do, so there's no more speculation. I feel kind of weird now that I'm not wearing a shirt anymore. It was a great idea at the time. All right, well, I will. you want sprinkles on your nipple? So um, the DVD will be available after this event. Now the worst part of this is there's a dollar bill on my ass that some poor waitress <laughs> in Las Vegas is going to get tonight as a tip. <laughs> so Dave, impossible. Dave Maynard has ass pennies. Impossible. I'll, I'll go ahead. I, you want me to give my ass dollar to the EFF? Okay, I'll give my ass dollar to the EFF. <laughs> Hey, hey, Jack, 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 I, I have a dollar for you for the EFF. <laughs> could, could you pass that down? <laughs> Minty fresh. I'm not touching that shit. <laughs> Anybody else? Did anybody else ever wonder where the uh, ass-based ATMs were? Turns out it's Dave's ass. Well, he won't tell you. Is there's three hundred dollars there waiting for you. <laughs> so, back to, to my plight of not getting laid and my my fiance. I was just joking about that. She didn't actually dump me. I'm still engaged. But no thanks to these two assholes. Three <laughs> assholes. No, she's actually not here because last year she got the shit scared out of her. <laughs> because believe it or not, I'm going to go into a little bit of a personal story here. I'm not the one that's holding up the wedding. So she was actually scared she was going to have to wake up next to me every day for her life. <laughs> Lord knows I'd be scared. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Put it in his ear! Put it in his ear! <laughs> we need Mortman. We, we are in this club. I like yum. If you know what I mean. I also like, uh, like Debian's app yet. I'm a fan of port for, uh, for Mac OS X. And uh, occasionally I like to have sex in alleys. I I'm amused that this dude is dropping O'Day and we just want to take his fucking pants off. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the fail panel. All right, who would pay me money to take my pants off? You can donate it to the EFF. <laughs> See, this is why men make crappy lovers, because after you've seen it, you don't want anything to do with it anymore. <laughs> Rich. Rich. Take your pants off, Rich. Come on, Rich. Can't follow that show. Hey, Rich. Rich, take your pants off. <laughs> Who knew that not one? Oh, I got, the, I got the moving on hand. No, come on. Hey, Rich, you've done it before. Just do it again. It's no big deal. Just close your eyes. It'll be over in like two minutes. <laughs> okay. It takes an analyst to know an analyst, I guess. Oh, 
So I'm going to point out, there was some discussion earlier in the week about how there were booth babes at the McAfee booth at Black Hat, and that was wrong, and women didn't really like that. <laughs> Let's take a poll, women. Did you like to see Rich in his underwear? Did you like to see me in my underwear? <laughs> you, sir, have failed epically. <laughs> this is you the highlight of my life. I'm going to go home and write in my diary tonight that I took my, state, my pants off on stage and nobody liked it. True story, I once went to a gay club and no one hit on me. I, I felt bad about that. Now I've been in Vegas for a week and not a single prostitute has propositioned me. I'm starting to get a complex about this, guys. It's better than a simplex. It's better than a simplex. And on that note, we should all get Martin to take off his pants. Yeah. yeah. No, no, fuck, no. no that is not PCI Dude, have you seen him? Oh, shit, he's still here. All right, well, <laughs> I don't know what to talk about anymore. I was going to, I was going to talk more, but at this point, I'm somewhat embarrassed that I, I'm sure there's going to be, my business partner will be like, why are there pictures of you on the internet in your underwear? And you didn't bother to have like a six pack, like a vampire teenager or something. You were sparkly, though. I was. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> is that it? I was going to talk more about it. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> Wait a minute. We got Thundercock and not Thundercock, and that's it? Has anybody got yeah, some disinfectant? Uh, yes. Nicely done, Dave. No, it's... God, give me a hand. It's no problem. You know, at this point, we should see if we can get Christopher Hoff out of his pants. No? Hey, Chris, no? I need that picture. So I'm going to tell you all a true story about Christopher Hoff and myself. We were in Washington, D.C. Oh, no. no. <laughs> and after we were, we, uh, we served as sex toys from some senators. Oh, oh, oh. We went, to, we went to Pizza Hut, and we got the buffet, and it was delicious. They had, they had thin crust pizza. They had uh, regular hand tossed. They had deep dish. The deep dish was deaf. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, that was not a good... No, it was actually a fucking awesome night. <laughs> not going to talk about... Yeah, so... um. All right. Cloud. Who here has heard of the cloud? <laughs> Don't believe it. Don't worry, there's only nine slides. <laughs> Ran out of fingers. So, um, all right, harvesting the cloud. So, okay, I've been spending a whole lot of time doing, oh, wow, CISSP. Um, I've been spending a whole lot of time doing cloud security stuff lately and just playing around with that. And Matt actually was uh, last week over in China teaching a cloud security course. So this is kind of interesting. Um, so y you might be shocked. I don't really speak Chinese. There, there you go. Okay, we got some shock out of the crowd. I don't really speak Chinese. And uh, so I went over there. And I was told, oh, no, there will only be 15 people in the class. They all speak fluent English. Uh huh. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> yeah, I got pwned by China. So, um, go over and I'm in the classroom. And things are actually going okay. We go to the lecture, we get to the legal regulatory part. I go, who's heard of PCI? Nobody. Who's heard of SAS 70? Nobody. Uh, we don't talk to the government. Oh, okay. So, um, well, we, we change that section. Then we get to, um, the, the part where we're all building our virtual instances and doing all this stuff and, setting up all the security, and, and all of a sudden, nobody can SSH connect to their instances. And I'm getting pissed off, and I'm blaming the local network. No, no, the web interface, everything else works fine. And then I thought for a moment. 
I'm in China. I have 25 students, each spinning up multiple virtual machines. 50 virtual machines being created by China on Amazon, all from the same IP address, <laughs> with 25 people trying to SSH in. And so I realized at that moment that I should go to my video backup slides. Um, and, and I got to give Amazon credit. We were only knocked off for about 45 minutes. So that, so that was pretty good. So how many people here know how like Amazon and that stuff works? Only a couple of people. So it's pretty straightforward. When you sign up and everything, you go in, and what you do is you launch your virtual machine, or we call it an instance when it's running on Amazon. Uh, and basically what that is is uh, um, it's just a, a fairly normal virtual machine with all the sort of cloud stuff around it. And the process for doing that is pretty interesting. And so that's what this slide is for here. Uh, the, when you go to launch, so there's two things. There is an image, which is like the stored version of the operating system you want to run. And then there's the instance, which is your running virtual machine that's running in Amazon's environment. And this works for most infrastructure as a service, at least for what we call compute. So compute is when you're running systems and using memory and CPU cycles. Storage is, a little, is obviously a lot different. And so when you go to run a virtual machine, or you go to run an instance on Amazon, you know, you sign up, you type in, you say, I want to launch this instant, this image, which could be Ubuntu, it could be Windows, it could be a totally pre-configured stack of whatever you want. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. You can actually take a, like, the equivalent of a running server and sort of mark, basically save it down into an image that other people can run. And that is stored in something called object storage, which is Amazon S3, even though you can't access it normally through the S3 interface. And so you take that, it's going to go ahead. Hey, it's Rich, gonna Rich, 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 can I jump in here for a minute? Yeah. This is boring. <laughs> No, could, there's a penis later. Right, right. Could you talk? Could, could you pretend that that it's something exciting? Like, could you do this in like a a known so, voice? Jessica Alba and Dave Maynard and Matt Damon are the compute nodes. Yeah. So anyway, what happens is when you go to run something, it basically pulls it out of storage, figures out where to throw it, throws it in runs it as a virtual machine, and then it has what's known as this, pulls out a volume from the storage pool, so you get a volume. And there's cool stuff you can do, like snapshots and everything, which is almost an instantaneous backup in that environment. It's not quite instantaneous, but that's the way it works. Uh, and there's some cool things about how cloud is different, because all this can be managed through APIs instead of just a web interface. So when you go to use something like Amazon, just a little bit of background before we get to like, you know, the exploit tool we're going to show. You have things like access keys. Access keys are the way that you connect over the API if that API is REST or, or web-based. You have host keys, which is the SSH keys to get into your host. You have location zones, we won't go into our network zones, which is um, basically, you get kind of these firewalling really, oh fuck. Really, really, really basic like 1995 sort of firewalling capabilities. Now the cool thing is you can manage this all through APIs. So you don't have to go into like a VMware user interface and like, you know, define, I want this virtual machine to run in this place in this area, or I want to change these firewall rules or anything along those lines. You can literally do everything with API calls. We're going to see what a bunch of those are. Things like EC2 dash run dash instance, and then some info about how you would actually go ahead and run your instance. What did I do? A girl drinking a beer. Yeah, we're at DEF CON. <laughs> that gets a woo. <laughs> you know, you're in Vegas. You can see a lot of that. For a price. A sweaty ass dollar? Yeah. So when you use the APIs, you find out you, there, it's kind of interesting how this works. Because I fuck if I know. So there's API calls. There's all sorts of different ways you can access these things. And then, oh, no, that was a girl coming up. Oh, no, no, that's good. Yeah. I'm not going to give you a beer, but somebody else might. Um, yeah, there is an X. There's two different kinds of credentials you have. Access keys for REST calls or X.509 certificates you use for host calls. What the summary of all of this is, is almost every developer or administrator who uses Amazon EC2 or OpenStack or Eucalyptus, or any of the other private clouds, does not do this through the web interface that we all tend to use. They, they do all of this through API calls. 
and they manage it all on their desktop and they do it all through a command line interface. And so what's interesting is, is that the credentials to access so that the command line interface can work, all of your access credentials are set as environment variables. All of this stuff runs in user land. You don't need root, you don't need anything, and you don't have to know those at the time you set the call. It's all loaded up as environment variables. The most admins that I know, most developers that I know, set this so that these um, environment variables are set on boot time, so when they go ahead and boot their systems. And once you get those, you can do pretty much anything. So what we did is, uh, Josh Abraham, who was out here helping me before, or Jabra, we actually wrote a script we call Hoover. So we did it a couple of hours yesterday. Uh, it checks for the environment settings, and if those environment settings exist, then it's going to run everything else in here. It takes snapshots of all of your volumes, makes those snapshots public, and then sets the description as, DEF CON hacked me. It opens every port and every protocol for every security group. So with Amazon, you can do cool things. You have all these security groups to isolate off your virtual machines here, from here, from here. So you can have one that has like no public access back here so that only this other security group can access that security group. It's all the really cool stuff we teach you how to do in this cloud security class, and we just turn off the firewalls. I like to call that function shields down. <laughs> then we need to know what to attack. Hey, Rich, now, Rich, Rich. You, you didn't know you are on a fail panel, right? Yeah. All right. It actually works. No, I... <laughs> Well, hold on a second. Okay. Well, if it's on the fail panel and it works, then... I'm doing it wrong? Yeah, yeah I'm the guy who had the fucking retorted robot on the run off panel stage by succeeding. two years ago because I couldn't, yeah, get my robot to work. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a personal Jack problem. Jack just uh, informed me that we're, we're, we're out of fruit, but we have, quote, nuts up the ass. So <laughs> if you guys want toppings, I suggest <laughs> nuts. Yeah. I'll make a joke about it. <laughs> so, hey, Rich, what a... Uh, if you had to sum this presentation up to something that was really kick-ass, like, like, a, like a Camaro driving through like an elephant on fire, what, uh, what, what, what would it be? It would be a rocket goat running up your ass. So it's Tuesday night at the mogul house. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon-flavored uh, so pudding in a boot. Bacon-flavored pudding in a boot. <laughs> uh, and then so what it does is it actually launches a virtual instance and inserts all the DNS names so you know which systems to attack. Now the cool thing about this is, is that it runs in user land. You don't need to have any root to do it. Right now it's just, a, it's just a Perl script basically. We'll do a little bit more with it later. The network traffic looks totally normal. I mean if somebody hacks in, gets onto a developer's laptop in some cases, there's no outside calls to your like hacker systems or anything else. All the calls go straight back to Amazon. And there's some people no call connection. that command and control. Yeah. I mean, not me, but some people. I, I I'm trying not to be a cyber douchebag right now. <laughs> Thirsty? All right. Do you oh, want to see me it. try and make it work? That's scary stuff. Before I do that, I need to talk about how hippies suck. <laughs> I don't like hippies. Because Why don't you Why like rich, rich. hippies, Rich? What's that? H hippies, why, why do you hate them? Everybody so? take a picture. I want a picture of an analyst H on stage how, with Osama bin Laden. How many deadheads does it take to change a light bulb? How many, Jack? About a quarter of a million and one. One that can figure out how to do it, and a quarter of a million to follow it around the fucking country after it's burned out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I like Rich, and Rich is an analyst. He's probably the smartest analyst I no, know. No, Rich hippies. met his wife in Margaritaville, and the fact that he has a fucking slide deck that says why hippies suck confounds me. Parrot heads ain't hippies. Dude, that's about... Oh, what? So, let, Holy let's... crap! That's not a hippie. No. No, no, this is, this is why hippies suck. So let's start with, like, a hacker. Um, so let's take that hacker. Let's go ahead and add Hey, wait, 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 wait. Rich, 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 Rich. Didn't you see that presentation about not being a cyber douchebag? Yeah. Yeah, but look at all these animations, man. Okay, so I'm a douche. Fuck it. Um, I don't care. I'm at DEF CON. I'm on a stage. People are there. So then we add in heavy amounts of drugs. Then we put in really crappy music. <laughs> I'd use the other band, but they're dead. Then we pull out any brain cells. And what do you get, people? A fucking hippie. And that, hey, Rich, my friends, Rich, Rich. Hey, can I interrupt you is again? why hippies much? suck. Rich, could, could you go back to that picture again? What? 
Can you go back to that picture? How many, how many beers would it take, Rich? <laughs> that was a no comment. I'd like you all to record that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what we have here, assuming this shit works because we're doing a live demo on stage. What? Oh. Uh, okay, so this is the tool. Let's do a quick uh, look at the code here. And, uh, yeah, I don't have a connection. Thank Hell. God. I was really worried your demo was going to succeed. Finally, that su something that sucks more than your fucking presentation. Fuck you, Chris. Make waffles, boy. I still smell butter on my nipples. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I have to go to wash my hands. I touched your ass dollar. <laughs> Febreze is not going to make it. And my ass. Hard. You had to put it in there. I'm a fruit. I'm a vegetable. I don't know what that means, actually. Never mind. It sounded good at the time in my head. The voices in Maynard's head are telling him to do stuff. Who thinks this is going to end well? <laughs> Oh, Martin McKay. I'm going to say your name really slowly again. Martin McKay. You know, you're right. I am thinking. I'm, I'm trying to think of a comeback right now. I've got nothing. However, I'll have lots of groupies now that will want to smell my butter nipples. And you'll stay, you'll, have to, you'll, you'll stay married. I mean, the groupie line forms to the left. Right there we have Christopher Hoff, first in line. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you look, there's nothing. Unfortunately, I'm no longer failing. So, um, here we've got the code. We just checked to make sure that that exists. We run through, we describe all the volumes, list them all out. We take snapshots of every single volume. We list the volumes. We make all of those snapshots public. That's great, we got waffles. Then we do a thing where we launch our instance. Hey, uh, Rich, is that a uh, is that stack IP address right there? You got, is it 169? How, how, uh, who that's owns that? That's an internal deal. That's how you actually get your real publicly accessible IP address from Amazon. Really? Yeah. Huh. So then this you go ahead, it. you describe all the instances, you dump it all the output files, and then blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's get out of that. Hey, wait, wait, go back. Was that Rich Muggle Key I saw? Yes, it was. Can you go ahead and cat.ssh slash authorize keys for us? Or uh, known keys? Or no. Could you just take it to a cat house? Yeah. So what this is doing now, first it checks that the environment variables are going ahead and working. It's fucking slow. Piece of shit. Okay. Then it's going ahead and creating snapshots of all my running instances. Now I'm only running a few, but imagine this. If you're attacking an enterprise and they've got something running on EC2, and even if they're running it on VPC, the same thing will work, or OpenStack or Eucalyptus, whatever you want to do, although those won't be as publicly accessible. It'll go ahead, create snapshots of everything in there. It enumerates the entire environment. Then it um, waits, because Amazon's really fucking slow. So, anybody have a joke? This summer, from New Line Pictures comes Rich Mogul Wynn. The Cloudinator. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting. Runs wild. Well, this is running in the. <laughs> one man. So if anyone is interested, dream. apparently there's a lulsec party. These have been left. All, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Somebody else can verify this. These have been left all over the place around DefCon. Uh, tonight at 2300. There is an information line that's going to be opening up, so you can get information about the party. Now, admittedly, Martin got this because somebody went up to him and goes, are you on the internet? <laughs> yeah. I mean, not gave like him this right card. now, but yeah. All right, so pull out your pens and pencils, kids. Here is the number that is listed. Hey, Rich, I can't help but notice you're opening all these ports. Does that make your image a slut? Yeah, we sort of just opened up, yeah, all of the ports. So, yeah, that would make us a bit of a slut. So your image is good to go is what you're saying? <laughs> just for now. <laughs> so the number work? is plus one, four, zero, two, six, 
What's what was that all fuck about? Nine. That's an Alaska number. We were kind of wondering. You know who it is. Get up here. There's a beer for you, maybe, if you tell us who it is. The, by the way, this is the guy wearing Am I the Fed shirt. Okay, plus one, four, zero, two, six, seven, two, eight, five, seven, one. I'm suspecting this is somebody's home phone number, and they're going to be fucking pissed. Your script At about is 11 done. o'clock. Your script is done. Your script is done. Huh? Your script. It's done. The what? It's done. What's done? It's the, your script. Your script is no, done. No, I saw that. It, yeah. You know what? I don't care about her IQ as long as she's got a 36 double D. Which is all I really look for in a president. That's probably why our current one's not doing well. He's like what? Like a 32 A? Not like you, it's a 36 C. 36 C, baby. With butter. It wasn't butter. I can't believe it wasn't butter. <laughs> so so every year I am used DC2 before? So should, should I tell that story that Maynard was alluding to? The one with the, the Pizza Hut? No, my kids are asleep. Sorry. Should I tell the story? All right. So I used to work in Hollywood. Sorry, Rich, because your shell script was boring as fuck. So I used to work in Hollywood. And uh, not on Hollywood and Vine, but actual Hollywood movies and stuff. Oh, that must be my wife paging me, telling me my kids are watching. Hang on. Uh, so I, I was on the show with Marley Matlin. You know Marley Matlin? The Children of a Lesser God. Academy Award winning actress, and uh, what's the other dude's name from fucking CSI? What? Name dropper. No, you know, I'm, I'm trying. So uh, that, that he show... He also knows Rich Mogul. Yeah, so uh, anyway, Marley Matlin comes up to me during a set break, and she starts drawing on my arm with a Sharpie, with a big heart and an arrow through it. And she says to me, with no exaggeration, Are you Kingo? And I'm like, what? She goes, Are you Kingo? And I go, I, so, uh, yes. So she sets me up on a date with this assistant director. This Cuban girl, very nice. But after about three dates, she tries to introduce me to uh, her mother, get married, this whole thing. So that didn't work out so well. So I decided that I would not continue with, with this dating process. Anyway, so I'm telling Dave this story at Schmookon in Vegas as we... Uh, Wait, no, Schmookon uh, in D.C. this D.C., time. Vegas, they, they moved yeah, it that. They yeah. did, they this did. This wasn't Schmookon. So I, ran, I rented a... No, 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 Chris, Chris. Gartner Security that Conference. That too. So I rented a limo. The Gartner Security Conference. I, I rented a limo, and, uh, and I, piled all these, I piled all these people in it, and we were chasing uh, certain individuals around, and we ended up in a sushi restaurant. Wait, as I, as I recall, there was a bunch of marketing girls from... That's a rumor. Verisign. So, well, Verisign. They were from yeah, was, Verisign. Right, Verisign. Right. Come that was after this we restaurant. started a, 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 a sword fight with a feather duster, a can of pledge, and a lighter next to that, that butter statue of the White House. A butter statue it was pretty awesome. of the White House. Yeah, this gets better, trust me. So we go to a restaurant. We, we, the girls went there. They sent us downstairs to what we were told was a, a bar. A reputable establishment it, for gentlemen. And it... It, it, I don't know where the reputable part came from, cause, but the last part was true. So we spent the evening yeah, reputabling. Is that a word? It is now. Uh, and at the end of the evening, uh, after, after certain dancing services were provided, this woman, the, the noise is kind of dying down, and I said, hey, you know, thank you. And some, somebody basically... Wait, I'm getting there. So basically somebody... Somebody starts making noises on the stage. Now, I should back up a little bit because when I dumped that girl, uh, uh, I was walking down the back lot of, of Warner Brothers, and out of nowhere, somebody hit me in the arm. And it was Marley Matlin who basically said, You fucked her over! And I, what? She starts screaming at me in this children of a lesser god enlightenment shit. And I, just angry, and I, I ran away. So I told Dave this story. Fast forward to the end of the, of the, of the dancing so, routine. So he literally told me this story. For, at, at, at the same hotel that Schmoocon was at before, before the feather duster. That's right. Right before we got the limo to go chase down some girls from Verisign. That's true. So we're at the bar and I'm saying thank you very much. And, at the, at, and I said, thank you. And the girl said, I can't hear you. And I said, thank you. And she goes, no, I can't hear you. So I, I ended up with the only deaf stripper in D.C. <laughs> which was a lot funnier when, when you and I were laughing about it in the no, limo, what, Dave. What's hilarious about the story is the question of, well, if you can't hear the music, how do, how do you dance? That was the question. Anybody know the answer to that question? 
<laughs> oh. You don't want to feel the beat around these guys. A simple, simple answer to our <laughs> deep, deep question, Dave. Doesn't um, matter how smart they are. Thank you. You are. may continue with your fucking boring cloud presentation now. No, I'm... I'm it's almost done. Yeah. It was they, a funnier they, story. They don't, they don't get Continue on. <laughs> it was when you were drunk. I fucking have, I mean, seriously, yeah, who cares now? So um, we have this. These are public snapshots of all the instances I had running. You can go and steal those if you want before I delete them. Uh, anybody, all you have to do is search on DEF CON hacked me, and you can find this. Uh, when we release the script, you can change it to whatever you want, and you'll be able to go ahead. And if you run this on someone's system who is a developer or something for Amazon, it'll go ahead and zoom all their stuff up. And then you need to know what targets to attack. So for that part, we go back over to the instances. What we actually did is we launched another instance as well. Uh, we didn't give it a name or anything else. Oh, no way. Stop. Stop. Come here. Come, come catch an egg. We, well, I'll catch an egg. This is going to go well. Wow. Half his children are watching. No one's watching that cares about me. <laughs> oh, I fail. So rich. Yeah, so we have What do you think about the proliferation of cloud in the enterprise? And do you think it's going to change the security paradigm? No. Do you think that we're going to have to revector our attempts Cyber to secure douche. the enterprise now? I'll circle back and ping you on that later on the golf course. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this guy? I'm going to touch the keyboard and then walk away. I'm done. So that's the uh, special instance we created that actually pings out so you know it exists. So you can go in, connect to it. Now right now it's only set with my SSH keys. We're going to adjust that so you can set it for your own SSH keys. Uh, and then that's the listing of your targets that now have no firewalls on top of them. So that's it. Thank you. It was kind of cool, but this is not the right place for it. And I believe Jack Daniels has uh, a religious message, and we're going to close out. I have a quick comment for anybody that doesn't know me who might think this is making fun of Arab culture or Israeli Listen, culture. Listen, I, I have to interrupt you for a second. There's souvenirs on this table except for the waffle makers. Anyone who wants a souvenir, come grab it right now except for the waffle maker. Uh, we have Weston oil. We have vitamin D milk. Uh, we have eggs. I, I can't believe it's not you. Yes. Uh, we have styrofoam plates, we have uh, chocolate sauce, maple syrup, sprinklies, lots of nuts, as you can tell. <laughs> Measuring cups, <laughs> knives. All right, so uh, let me. Sprinkles, sprinkles over there. Ladles. Throw Chris just bought a new Throw money in the pile. In the throw line. money in the Paper pile. Paper towels. I have a hand mixer. What? 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 Uh, half a box of biscuit mix. I, I have I two waffles. Did I, did I, I mention Western, mention Western oil? Anyone, no. I could come in handy later. two waffles left. <laughs> oh, and tongs. And, hey, we have uh, and I, less than a minute. Please I, donate to the I, EFF. Right, the EFF, the EFF requires your money, as do we all. And remember, laughing at deaf people isn't funny unless you do it at this, this, this conference. I haven't crashed all the right, panel. So I haven't crashed the panel. I have one thing to say. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yep. No, if, not, no let, not like that. If you I mean, think I'm making fun of Arab culture, I have one comment. If you get your news and believe the situation in the Middle East based on Western media, you fail. <laughs>